Good evening, One Church. It's so good to have you here today. It's going to be a very wonderful time in God's presence. So I'd like to say that you please gather the family around, gather everybody, and let's go into the presence of God. Even while we're at it, do well to invite your friends, invite your neighbors, send the links around, and let everybody enjoy God's presence this evening. We'll be going into a time of prayer right now, and I hope that you have a refreshing time even as we pray. See you after that. Good evening, church. I want to welcome you to this midweek service. I want to trust that the Lord has been faithful to you all through this week. I want us to start by thanking God for his goodness. Father, we thank you this evening. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because you are a wonderful God. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, God, for your provisions. Thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you, God, for everything you've been doing in our lives. Father, we are grateful in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. As you are aware, this year has been decreed to be our year of much more. We pray this evening and ask that the Lord will increase us on all sides. Open your mouth and pray for yourself and ask that the Lord will enlarge your coast. The Lord, we enlarge your territory. Father, we pray this evening, we ask for increase in the name of Jesus. Lord, you increase us on all sides. You will enlarge our territory. You will enlarge our coast in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will enlarge everything that has to do with us positively in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you, O oh God. You will enlarge and increase our service unto you in the name of Jesus. We'll be much more in every ramification of our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray this evening and ask that the Lord will help us to overcome every challenge and gain proper perspective on the operation of God's hands in our lives. Open your mouth and pray that the Lord will cause you to overcome every challenge and gain proper perspective his oppression in your life. Father, we pray this evening. We ask, O oh God, that we overcome every challenge in our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray you will help us to gain proper perspective of your oppressions that are ongoing in our lives in the name of Jesus. Zege Yakata La Banda Lababa Mo Robo Sende Libredesh E Bo Robodo Son Togo Libre Zata Yagada E Da Leba Da Lo Brondo Lobrobodo Son Togo Yeke Saint Telebredesh Father I pray for everyone that is going through one challenge or the other Oh God they will overcome those challenges in the name of Jesus by your power O oh God they will overcome every of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We ask, oh God, you will cause us to break into new spaces. Lord, we will break into new places, new platforms in the name of Jesus. Ask that the Lord will cause you to make yourself known, that the Lord will take you into new territories, that the Lord will cause you to break into new platforms. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we receive your favor. We ask, oh God, you will take us into new spaces. In the name of Jesus, you will introduce us in your own way. We will encounter divine favor, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For the remaining part of this month, for the remaining part of this year, Oh God, will we encounter new platforms? Will we encounter new favors, new breakthroughs? In the name of Jesus, ye de be li bron do lo bro do son to la baba ya da le man da le ge de bre de son do li ge de bre de shan ta la baba bas. In every area of our life, oh God, we experience expansion. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' 
mighty name. Pray. I want us to pray this evening. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That every tongue that will rise up against you shall be condemned in judgment. Lord, we pray this evening that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against any member of this church, to anyone, O oh God, that is connected to us. No weapon, O oh God, shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Your word says that there will be no divination, there will be no enchantment against us that will prosper. In the name of Jesus, every negative pronoun that have been made against us, the Lord will reject it in the name of Jesus. It will not see the light of day, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, because we know you will intervene in our affairs. In Name of Jesus, Lay Baranda Bolobrobodos, Sonto Lobrobodos, Ye get the Rabababa, Mayanda, Malanda Balos, Ye get the Reto Robodos, Sonto Lobobo, Zata Yagada, Lee Manda Lobondo Lobrobodos, Sonto Lobrobodo, Ye Ketelej, La Barababa, Ye Manda Lege de Yebe de Brebe, Sonto Lobrobodos, Ye Gadarababa, Mayanda, Malanda Balo Brobodos. In the name of Jesus, I want us to reject every demonic encroachment, every satanic quarters out of our lives. Father, we come against every satanic quarters, every demonic encroachment. Lord, we destroy them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we cast them out of our lives in the name of Jesus. Yanda malege di bolo bobo sondo lo bobo do segede la da yaga da rababa baba ma yanda male bende lo bodo bobo do i baranto boro bobo yegende li bondo bobo bobo sonto lo bobo do yaga di la baba baba yegande legede bede bede sonto lo bobo bobo shoko sete le bede father lord we pray that the works of our hands are blessed lord you will prosper the works of our hands in the name of jesus lord you will prosper the work of our hands in the name of Jesus. Everything, oh God, that our hand touches from henceforth, Lord, it receives your blessings in the name of Jesus. Lord, it receives your blessings in the name of Jesus. We decree your peace over our lives and families. It is well with us, oh God. It is well with us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We will receive help from above in the name of Jesus. You will send help us across our way you will send help us to us on a daily basis in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for your blessing. Let your blessing come upon our lives. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to decree the blessings of God upon your life. Ask that the Lord will bless you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, that you will experience all manner of God's blessings. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray this evening, we ask, oh God, for your blessing. Let your blessing come upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Let your blessings come upon our storehouses in the name of Jesus. Let your blessings come upon our businesses in the name of Jesus. Let your blessings come upon our health in the name of Jesus. We decree, O oh God, that no sickness will be able to stand before us in the name of Jesus. Let your blessing come upon everything that we we'll lay our hands to do. Lord, your blessings is upon us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lay in the name of Jesus, I want us to pray for our senior pastor. We're going to use him as a point of contact to reach in other ministers of God wherever they are, that the grace of God will be available unto them. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your servant upon this commission. We ask, oh God, for your grace upon his life. Lord, we use him as a 
point of contact to reaching other ministers of God. We ask it is well with them. You will keep them in all their ways. You will preserve them, O oh God. No evil will be before them. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus, because we know you have had an answer to us this evening. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your presence. You will do great and mighty things in our lives this evening. In the name of Jesus, Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. For to you be praise and glory, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Welcome back. I hope you had a refreshing time in the place of prayer. Like I said, it's going to be a fantastic time in God's presence. So right now, we're going to be going straight into a time of praise and worship. Again, it's going to be fantastic. So please enjoy even as the service goes on. Right after the praise and worship, we're going to be having Pastor T with the word. And I'm Amen. going to be right here to see you after the word. Father, we give you praise in this house today. We worship, we give you praise. He's exalted, the King is exalted now. I will praise Him. He's exalted, forever exalted now. We'll praise Exalt his holy 
God, welcome to yet another midweek service. I uh, hope the week has been kind to you. I pray, uh, you know, that you experience victory all week. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. I also hope that you are, you know, making the best of the season, adjusting to uh, whatever, you know, new way of work has been presented. Um, through it all, God is giving us victory, uh, and we still believe, amen, that there is so much more for us in this year and in the, indeed this uh, decade. So please, you know, get uh, family and friends around the table uh, or around the TV. Uh, you want to send the links out to friends, uh, to family? Don't forget, we need to get into a habit of doing this. You know, every time you see, um, you know, uh, church designs, you know, service designs, service links, please put it up on your social media, your WhatsApp status, um, you know, feel free to put church designs on your Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, wherever it is. Uh, let's ensure to keep this going, uh, you know, keep the traction going um, and just trust God, uh, you know, for growth on all fronts in the name of Jesus. If this indeed is a blessing to you, um, then you should spread the word. Amen. All right. So uh, we want to kick off this uh, evening and I want to speak on the subject Faith in action. Amen. Faith in action. Faith in action. Our Sunday series for the month centers around the subject of wisdom. Um, and a lot of us miss out on what I call the, the practicality of wisdom. You know, the fact that uh, wisdom is not, you know, when we think about wisdom, we think about sages and ancient wisdom and mystical stuff and all of that. But wisdom is really practical, amen? And it takes faith to practice the wisdom of God. One of the things um, I said in, in the, I think it was the first Sunday of the month, is that all of the wisdom that God used in creating the heavens and the earth is actually available to us today and is actually packaged in his word um, and actually also comes via the Holy Spirit. And we deny ourselves a great deal. Amen. When we put that on the table, we leave it aside, and then we chase uh, human wisdom, carnal wisdom, vain wisdom, uh, you know, shortcuts. I said uh, last Sunday that if your relationships don't improve you or your circle of friends don't improve you, you are not in a circle, you are actually in a cage because it's limiting you. And you should, uh, as a believer who is maturing, you know, take concrete steps to ensure that you have people around you who will increase your faith, who will strengthen you. Um, let me, I'm particularly drawn to the story of the um, guy in, uh, it's in Luke 5. Let me, let me open there very quickly. I didn't even plan to start with this. It's in Luke 5. Uh, I'll find that just now. And, and it's a very interesting story. It will just buttress my point. Uh, Luke chapter 5. Okay, so let's open to Luke 5. You see this uh, around verse, is that verse 14 now? Let me check. Uh, or 19. Good. That is verse, verse 18. Verse 18, or I'll start from verse 17. It came to pass as a, on a certain day, as Jesus was teaching, um, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, uh, a man that was taken with a palsy, he was paralyzed, basically, and they sought means to bring him in to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and they let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, <coughs> excuse me, unto him, man, your, your sins are forgiven you. Amen. And let, me, let, me, let me stop there. Uh, the Bible says that, you know, these guys, um, you know, brought a man on a stretcher uh, and, you know, they knew Jesus was teaching. They tried to bring him through the crowd to place him before Jesus to be healed. 
um, there was no way. So they took off the tiling. I mean, that would be the roof of the house, and they lowered him. And so it's important in our lives, uh, when we're talking about faith in action, that you even have people around you who can stick out their necks for you, people around you, you know, who will lower you through the roof if they have to, and essentially do everything that it requires, amen, to bring you before Jesus. Um, one thing we say as a church in one church is that we uh, build bridges, amen, with the unlikely, and we bring them into ever deeper relationships with Jesus Christ. One of our values is that we will do whatever it takes, amen, to facilitate experiences with Jesus. It's very important, um, you know, because relationships mean a lot to us. Uh, the love of God means a lot to us. And when you want to practice your faith, I think it's, it's, it's a key thing. You don't want to have people around you who talk down on your faith. You don't want to have people around you uh, who look down on your dreams. You don't want to have people around you, you know, who minimize what God is doing uh, in your life. You know, you have big dreams. You know, God says, I mean, gives you really powerful instruction. Imagine, you know, imagine if, uh, you know, when, when Jesus called Peter out of the boat to walk on water. Imagine if the other disciples, we forget that the other disciples were there. Imagine if the other disciples had talked him out of it. We wouldn't have that powerful story in scripture, you know, that talks about this man stepping out of his comfort zone. And I, I want to imagine with the support of his friends, amen, because there were 11 other guys in there who didn't try to stop him, who believed in the words of Jesus with him, amen. And as much as they did not take the steps that he did, um, if you will not encourage me, at least don't discourage me, yeah? Um, and, and so our relationships are very, 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 very important. I cannot overstress um, the point of that, that you find yourself, you know, in the right circles, find yourself in the right relationships, and if you feel at this time, um, you know, you have limiting relationships, you, you want to audit that. You want to audit your relationships. And yes, I use the word audit. You want to audit your relationships. What sort of relationships around you? What sort of friends do you have? Are they adding to you? Are they taking from you? Are they limiting you in any way? How are our friendships limiting our faith? How are our friendships limiting our ability, um, you know, to hear God? How are our friends uh, limiting our boldness? You know, do you have friends you can share your dreams with without fear? Um, do you have friends you can share your dreams with who will at least let you know they believe in you uh, even if they don't have the courage to do what you're doing, <laughs> you know, and, and, and check on you and encourage you um, and pray with you and ensure that you're just, you know, you're right in the center of God's will. I, I find that so important, you know, uh, to stress. So, so I'll, I'll give you that assignment. Do a relationship audit. It's, it's even beautiful, um, the season we're in. You know, it might give you the time to check on your relationships, uh, and ask, you know, which is for you, which isn't for you, which is for this season of your life, which isn't for this season of your life, um, and all of that stuff. You know, they say a friend in, in, in need is a friend um, indeed, and it doesn't always have to uh, be a situation of need. Uh, well, I mean, depending on how you look at it, you know, if you need encouragement, you need support, yes, and, and the people who rally around you at those times um, are also your friends. And these are the kinds of people who will help give legs to your faith. Because when we talk about faith in action, what we're essentially talking about is giving legs to faith. You know, Hebrews 11.1 1 talks about faith being the substance of things hoped for, uh, the evidence of things that we don't see. And, and that tells us that faith is substantial. Amen. Faith is not spooky. Faith is not, you know, you think about faith and you think about smoke. You know, something appeared, someone appeared, you heard a voice and all of that stuff. Uh, but faith is actually very practical, and faith needs to be grounded. Yeah, and so grounded hope is uh, is faith. So you see, in Romans eight, um, and I'll just read there. Romans eight, around verse twenty-four. Romans eight. I don't have these in my notes. So <laughs> Romans eight, around verse twenty-four. Paul says that we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees. Why does he yet hope for it? Amen. For if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience 
uh, wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities and all of that. The, the Spirit also helps our handicaps and makes it intercession um, for us. Amen. And so what faith does really is that it gives ground to your hope. That is why your hope must be rooted in the Word of God for it to become substantial, for it to become faith. You must have something you hold on to. You must have an anchor, as Scripture calls it, that grounds your faith and uh, your, your hope and keeps it from sailing. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you, you, you are always able to go back into that Word of God. You're o- always able to then hold on to that Word that God gave you. Um, and God, you know, giving you a great support system also helps because that, I mean, ultimately everything God will do in your life He will do through the relationships that he has placed um, in your life. Isaiah 30, from the 20th verse, it's a scripture I quote quite a lot, where it talks about, um, uh, you know, though God gives you the, you know, the water of, uh, the bread of adversity, the water of affliction, he says your uh, your eyes will uh, no more, your teachers will no more be withheld from you, your eyes will behold your teachers, you know, then you hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walking in it, when you turn to the left or when you turn to the right. And it really speaks about, you know, the human resource or the human resources that God has placed in your vicinity uh, to bring you into the fullness of God's will. This is very, very, very important. And I, I, I'm not even sure why I started on this note this um, evening, because it's, it's not in my notes. It wasn't part of what I intended to say. And I feel like God might be speaking to someone uh, and indeed is speaking to someone, um, you know, concerning this. Very, very, very super important that you are careful about the relationships you have around you if your faith will work. It is like planting seed in the wrong soil. Amen. It's like planting seed in the wrong soil. The, the relationships around you act as the nutrients, you know, the water, uh, the sun, and all of these things. Uh, that will help foster that seed. So it's important you see that. Uh, And that's the first thing I'm going to say on this subject, faith in action. That for your faith to have legs, for your faith to be effectual, for your faith to work, for your faith uh, to bring about mighty things in God, uh, your relationships will be um, very key in this. I want us to look, and I will begin to probably just wind down on this, I want us to look in our Bibles, uh, Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, um, from verse 2. And whatever we can't finish today, I'll, I'll just you know, pick up from there next week. Joshua, Joshua chapter 6, from verse 2. It says, The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given unto your hand uh, Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor, and you shall come past the city, uh, all you men of war, and go around the city once. Uh, thus shall you do six days. And seven priests will bear before you the ark, uh, seven trump- trumpets of ram's horns. Um, and the seventh day you will come past the city seven times. And the priests will blow with the trumpets. And it will come to pass that when they make a long blast uh, with the ram's horn, And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people will shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. That's verse 5. And I'll do verses 16 and 20 also. It came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua uh, uh, said, Unto the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And it's important, you know, uh, it's important to, to please note the tense here. Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. I'll say it again. Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. I'll say it a third time. Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him. 
and they took the city. And the key point I want to bring out of this is that the people shouted before the city or before the walls came down. Amen. Faith acts. And let me go a step further uh, by saying faith acts in faith. Amen. God said in uh, Joshua 6 and verse 2 that I have given you the city. Now, when God said that, the walls were still up. And the point is, God's word must be greater than your earthly reality because God's word is your ultimate reality. I'll say that again. God's word must be greater than your earthly reality because God's word is your ultimate reality. Amen. What God has said is always greater than what is happening. Your job as a believer is to believe and to act until what is happening gives way to what God has said. I'll say it again. Your job as a believer is to believe and to act until what, God, until what is happening gives way to what God has said. He said, shout because the Lord has given you the city. And as we go into this next half of the year, I want to give us that encouragement. Shout because the Lord has given you the city. God is saying, act in faith even when it doesn't look like it, even when you don't see it, even when it doesn't feel like it, because God indeed has given you the city. And these people took prophetic action. These people took steps. Amen. They could have sat down wondering, you know, but the city hasn't, uh, uh, sorry, the walls haven't gone down yet. You know, what do you mean by, I mean, Joshua came with an army. I want you to think about this. And this is where it's important to always, you know, have your ears attentive to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Uh, because where you intend to fight a war, I trust God in the second half of this year, God will ask you to just calm down and, and, and keep your peace and watch his salvation. Amen. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I just want you to, you know, say a big amen to that. Some of you will not have to fight the battles you intended. Some of you will not have to negotiate as hard as you intended. Some of you will not have to present and to pitch as hard as you've intended. You will not have to, uh, you know, reach out to as many as you have intended. God said he has given you the city. And as you take prophetic steps, and I'm, I'm saying this to myself also, because there are things God is dealing with me about, you know, around one church and things we need to do and, and boldness that I require to, you know, take some steps and make some demands and things like that. And I'm praying the same for you. Amen. That as you shout, that as you take prophetic steps and take prophetic action, you will literally see the walls uh, uh, tumble and come down uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Shout because the Lord has given you the city. And this again emphasizes the place uh, or the importance of relationships. The people around aligned. Amen. They, they, they dropped their swords, dropped their shields. Amen. Took on the, um, uh, you know, took the, 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 they, 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 they took on the worship mode. The, the priests took on the rams, uh, on the, the horns. Amen. And decided, all right, God said, let's go around the city. I mean, what sort of war strategy is that? Just think about it. Let's go around the city uh, once a day for six days. On the seventh day, go around it seven times. And then the priests blow and the people shout. <laughs> and the walls are going to come, come down. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can go on and on. I'll, I'll probably just build on this um, uh, next week. But I want you to please just think about that, that as you go into this second half of the year, God is releasing grace for boldness. God is releasing grace for strong faith. God is releasing grace for active faith, grace for faith with legs. God is releasing you into new circles and new relationships. Amen. People who will hold you up. People who will, if they have to, take off the roof of the building and lower you. People who will believe in what you're doing and indeed what God is doing through you and will stand with you until, you know, uh, the physical circumstances, the budget of the nation, um, 
you know, what your space or your, your sector is saying and all the negativity being thrown at you at this time will give way and you will literally see the reality of God's word um, unfold in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. I want to release grace this evening. Uh, I just believe there's a strong unction on this word. Uh, Father, Lord, I just, I just come to release my heart to my brothers and sisters under the influence of your word tonight and even those uh, that will listen hereafter. Lord, I ask for grace for new things as we go into this half of the year. I ask for grace for boldness. I ask for grace, O oh Lord, for a discerning heart. I ask for grace, O oh Lord, for an obedient heart as we go, Lord, into this second half of the year that our, our faith, O oh God, receives legs legs, legs, active faith to, to tear into the fullness of God's will for this second half of the year, to step out of our comfort zone, to obey prophetic instruction and do the things that the Holy Spirit says, even before we see manifestations, knowing that God's word is greater than any situation that might be unfolding around us. Father, we receive this grace tonight. We say thank you. We give you praise. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said a big amen. Ooh, God bless you. I do hope that that word was a blessing to you. Amen. Your job is to take a further step. Your job is to build on that. The Bible talks about the Berean Christians in Acts 17, 11. It says they were more noble character than those in Thessalonica. Why? Because uh, they searched the scriptures or they received the word of God with great eagerness. And then they went home to search the scriptures to see uh, if what uh, Paul said was true. So I'm leaving you with that assignment. Two assignments today, audit your relationships and then build on what you've heard tonight. And let's just trust God for a breakthrough in your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless God. Don't forget to join our, uh, our devotionals. We started a wisdom devotional on Monday. Um, it's still on and the link should be on the screen um, as I speak and in the comment section, please don't forget to join it. Uh, right now we have maybe about 60 people on it. I would love to see more of us on it. Yeah, please sign up today. There's another one for the 20th to the 29th. It's the Wisdom Devotional for Finance. Let us, let us birth God's word in our hearts uh, um, this season. And also the link for that will be put out also. Please, you just need to download U version. U version on your um, on your device. Download U version on your device, and you should have seen the links in your email. If you haven't been receiving emails from church, please check your spam. Yeah. Otherwise, just send an email to admin at onechurchng.org. Admin for administration at onechurchng.org, and we'll send you that. Amen. Let me welcome those of you worshiping with us for the very first time. You are a part of this experience for the first time. We want to say a big God bless you. Thank you for joining with us. We call this an experience. Amen. It's an experience beyond a church, beyond a meeting. It is an actual experience. Welcome to this experience. Thank you for being a part of us for the first time. One church members, let's just love on our friends. Please signify in the comment section that it's your first time. Uh, we would love, love to welcome you. On the screen, you should see a link and a QR code. In the comments section, the same thing. Please click on it. We want to uh, have a few of your details so we can call you, so we can say thank you for uh, uh, being a part uh, of what we're doing here. Thank you so much. God, God, infinitely bless you. Uh, join us like this on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., uh, on Sundays, 9 a.m., and you will be blessed. That is a promise from us or from God to you. We look forward to seeing you uh, this Sunday where we continue our series on wisdom. Thank you so much for being a part of us. We love you. Thank you so, so much. Amen. Before we close, I'd like for us to uh, uh, take our closing. Sorry, I'd like for us to, to take our offerings. Amen. We want to honor God with our offerings, with our tithing, with our giving of any sort. Let me encourage you to do that right now. Uh, let me say a big thank you. Your giving has gone a long way in this season to put food on many tables, to uh, bless the community around us uh, and even the church. And I just want to say a big thank you for that. Uh, may God honor what he's doing through you uh, and increase you on all sides. 
On the screen, there are different ways by which we give. Uh, please avail yourself of one of them. Uh, the account details, the, the USSD code. Um, and let's just trust God together, uh, you know, to reward your giving, to reward your obedience, to reward your show of trust um, and love. Thank you so much. Let me say what a prayer before we close. Uh, sorry, as we give. Father, Lord, we just come to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity to give to you out of the, uh, out of the abundance that you have given to us. Father, Lord, I, I ask that you help us to stretch our faith in this season. Give us the spirit of the Macedonians. Paul said, uh, even out of that, their lack, they still gave, and they still showed a willingness to give. And I pray, Lord, that that be someone's sign today, that that be someone's uh, stretch of faith today, and that you honor that in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give. We give you praise. We pray in Jesus' name. Everyone said a big amen. Thank you so much for your giving. Amen. So I look forward to us uh, seeing again on Sunday. Uh, please be sure to invite friends. Be sure to invite family. Uh, we take our closing charge from uh, Pro Proverbs chapter 4, verses uh, 18, and then 20 to 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 18, and 20 to 23. <clears throat> I want us to say that together. One, two, let's go. My path is as a shining light, shining ever brighter onto the perfect day. This week, I pay attention to God's words. I incline my ears unto his sayings. His words don't depart from my eyes. I keep them in my heart. For his words are life to me and health to my body. This week, I guard my heart with all diligence. For everything I do flows from it. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you again on Sunday. Well, haven't you had a fantastic time in God's presence today? It's been wonderful all day. And I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us for service today. Make sure you do well to join us again on Sunday. Thank you and God bless you.